So to save the data submitted by the form, let's go back to our form API. We've done this part now where we've created the definition. The next thing to do is to instantiate the form, but also to handle cancelling, submitting data, or otherwise. So back in our edit page, this is the page that we're actually on here, local message edit. We need to have some more PHP code to handle submission. So let's do this. If the form is cancelled, what do we want to do? Uh, so let's get all that stuff. That looks pretty good. So this looks pretty good. Before we're going to do something like display the form though, we want to put the header out first. We don't need to do that. And well, what I'd really be interested in is this data here. So when the form is submitted, we're going to get the data in this variable here. And then we can come in here and process that, insert it into the database, etc. So we're not going to set any default data, we'll just kind of leave it. Uh, so we can get rid of that. We're going to display it like that. Yeah, not much is happening right now. All right, so what I want to do is, if I click cancel, I want to go back to the manage page. Let's start with that. So here, go back to manage page. Which is pretty easy. We're just going to do a redirect to to our dub 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 root, and then our local message manage .php, and we can put a message here as well. By the way, you cancelled the. Uh, I don't know, message form. Let's give that a whirl. So refresh that. Oh, we should. Yeah, I see what we've done there. So we started doing some output and then we redirected. So that's wrong. You should never really do that in Moodle. So let's move that one down again to the bottom. This should not be happening here either. So let's refresh that. We're on the manage page. Edit, cancel. You cancel the message form. So that's what we want to see. Yeah, so we don't want to be echoing anything if we're going to do a redirect. And since we don't have any validation here, I'm just going to get rid of this part of the if statement. So we always want to come down here to display, unless we redirect. And so let's just do a quick refresh there again. So of course on the manage page, we should put a button here as well to get over to the edit page. Edit, edit, cancel, we go back there. And you cancel the form. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And here, when we submit the form, this is gonna be the key. We want to get this data, put it into our, uh, where is it, local message, table. So what is the data looking like? Well, I guess one way to look at the data, if you don't have like a debugger set up, you can do something like this, dump, dump die. Let's see what happens if we do that. Go back to edit. This is my uh, message, success. And this is basically what we're going to get back. We get an object with message text, which is a string, message type, which is a string, one. And that's the message type that I defined here in the form, one, because I put that as a success. And submit button. Like, you can have different buttons. You can have more buttons that say, um, you know, maybe I don't want to have just save. I could have save and more buttons that do different things with the form. But in this case, that's the data we get back. So let's just look at that one more time. 
we get a string and we get a message type. So what do we want to do with that? Let's get rid of this. Insert the data into database table. Let's do that. Let's start with doing up here. Oh, we have to do it after the config, so something like this, global db. This is the way that we can interact with the database. I've explained this in a previous video, but it's basically the interface between your code and the database, and it lets you write queries without writing direct SQL, because Moodle will work with Postgres, MySQL, and other databases, so you don't want to be writing direct SQL if you don't have to because for one thing the syntax could be different between different database engines. So we want to, well, let's get the message text equals from form message text. Message type equals from form message type. Pretty easy and then we're just going to insert that so we want to make a new record which is a new class so record to insert you do it like this just to be really explicit record to insert uh, what's it called message text equals You know, let's just let's just do it like this. This is a bit crazy. Get rid of that. This is how you insert a record in Moodle anyway. What you need to do is create the whole row as an object like this with all the properties set in there. And then you do db insert record the table local message and the object record to insert it's really that easy after we insert that I'm just trying to think if we need to do anything else probably not we might want to redirect back to the manage page but let's just start with that so Hello, 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 change this. So it's done something, it, it didn't uh, redirect, but let's look in our table. Oh, it did it from before as well. Yeah, so we started to insert some data here to our database. Let's give that another test. So, test two, error should be, probably be number two, right? Uh, let's check that. Yeah, number two. Number two is just because it's number two here. Number two is error. So that's looking pretty good. I think let's do a redirect here. It kind of makes sense. And we'll say instead of you cancel the form is you created a message. And we say with title, and we'll concatenate on the end of that string this to make it a bit dynamic, our returning message. So let's check that out now. To test three, you created a message with title test three, and refresh this. Yep, that's in there. And now what I want to do is on the manage page, fix up this page a bit because right now I want to see my messages. So let's do that. Here, let's put a global DB and let's do messages equals DB get records. Local message. 
So we're going to get all the messages and let's feed them into our template. That's how you do it. So I'm going to say messages is messages and then in our template I'm going to loop over the messages and display them nicely with some HTML. So the way to loop over them, let's just go back to our template stocks now, is here, this one. So if you do it like this, if the lemmings, if the variable lemmings is an array, like here, lemmings, then the section is repeated for each item of the array. And this is how to output a list. So we have a list of messages. This is going to be like an array of objects. And let's go into our template. Here it is. So let's change this maybe to list of messages. And here, let's do messages. And then the closing one was like that. All right. Oh. Cool. So we're going to output a list of messages here. And in each message, what do we have? Each, each message has a message text message type. So let's just do, for now, something like message text just to see the list of what they're called. Uh, let's just go with that to start with. Uh-oh. Okay, so this is not working right now. And that's because we haven't fed the template context exactly properly here. Um, if I just do debugging for a second, I'm going to put a breakpoint here. Start listening and refresh. Our messages uh, array is full of objects, but you see how we've got them nested like this? That means that the template is not able to actually reach in here and find message text. We've got to massage this data a little bit more before we feed it into the template. So I'll just let this go. And this is what we're going to do. I'll just do a quick, uh, like, uh, you know, just test equals. And uh, this is what we have to do. We have to do an array values on messages first. And let's look at the difference between them. If I refresh again. So obviously messages, well, we'll do it down here. Messages is an array with these objects like this. And then if we look at test, we can see the difference. It's actually uh, change the the array keys here, which is going to let the template actually figure out which is which and loop through them properly. So just a subtle little change, but that helps the template actually see what they are. So let's turn off debugging again. Obviously that's not loading right now, but let's do array values here instead. Just get rid of that breakpoint. We can get rid of this, we don't need that. Refresh. Yeah, so just having the array keys start at zero helps uh, the moustache template loop through them. So that's looking pretty good. We can see our messages. I also want to put a button here so we can go to create a new message. Uh, so let's do that. So I want to put a button into the template. So here, Maybe underneath everything, you know, obviously you can do this however you want, but let's put a button in here. So usually the way you do this in Moodle is with like an input type equals button. And you do it like that class. And of course we're using bootstrap, so button, button primary, do it like that, on click. And then we can say, location.href equals and we can put our new uh, URL in here and in fact it might be better to do this with a variable say edit URL and then let's feed that in 
from the template. Where is that again? Message manage edit URL new Moodle URL and we can just give it the path here message manage.php um, let's just check if that works it does seem to work we'll give it a uh, you know a value so we can actually see what's going on there create message and also we don't want to go to manage we want to go to edit let's go with that whoops refresh create message and that goes to the edit screen if we cancel go back to the manage screen okay that's looking pretty good um, we can obviously style this better but we'll just leave it with uh, with that for now we can style it better we can change all the HTML of course we got fully access to do everything we need uh, here like displaying each message but let's leave it like that for now